What up, people? Vanny from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel here with my seventh installment of my dungeon guide for Conan Exiles. And today's guide is going to be on the Midnight Grove. We are going to show you how to get there, what you need, and if you can solo it, and just kind of show you the boss fights, give you the whole rundown, and at the end, how to get the Jabalsag religion. So let's get started here. So first things first, in order to get to the Midnight Grove, you must get a potion of Midnight. Shocker. So if you look on your map, there's this place called the Den. And right over here in this little spot is this bat-looking were creature. His name is Child of Jebel Sog. If you speak to him, he's going to teach you how to learn the Midnight Alchemist religion, or you can purchase a potion of midnight for five feral flesh so they made it very easy for somebody in order to get into the midnight grove the good thing about having the midnight alchemist is that if you go into your feats and you check out your midnight alchemist this is where you also learn how to reset your attribute points and how to reset your feet points in the patch they have separated them out into two separate potions which is such a quality of life improvement, I can't even tell you. So, Feral Flesh is very easy to get, but it's even easier if I just say, Hey, give me a Potion of Midnight. So, once you have obtained your Potion of Midnight, you want to make sure that you have some good gear. So, I will give you the standard setup that I pretty much use everywhere else, and that is Silent Legion, and I put on Armor Reduction because Silent Legion is heavy. And then I use my Tila Sorrow, which is also what you learn from getting through the dungeon, the Black Keep. I have a whole other dungeon video on it. You can check it out on the link, which shows my, all my dungeon video playlists. Look for the Black Keep. It will show you where to get this setup of gear and this weapon. And then lastly, I have on an Arc Arconian, I don't even know how to say it, Arconian uh, War Axe, and then I have a shield. Um, the reason why I have a shield and a axe is that it's just pretty much now the new meta in the game. Everything can be blocked by a shield and you don't take damage while blocking. So it just makes it where if you're in an oh crap moment, you can just go ahead and throw up your shield and heal yourself. Now, that's pretty much it. Both of these have a weapon damage enchantment on them to increase the damage. Uh, other than that, I have a skinning knife. I only have 50 roasted haunch with me, and I have a water skin. It is completely up to you if you guys want to bring healing potions and all that, but I have been able to clear this dungeon at level 60 in this setup without pretty much any trouble. Um, I will tell you, you can do this at earlier levels. It just is very long. It's a long dungeon as it is, and to try and do this early just makes it even longer. But I have been successful doing it at level 50, um, it just was a real headache and not worth it. I would wait till 60, get your set up here, and then go have at it. Now, if you bring a couple friends, you could probably do it even earlier um, than that. So let's check out my attribute setup. I do 40 strength, I do 30 vitality for this wonderful health regen, and then I do 30 grit for the natural resistance and the increased stamina regen. I also put a lot into endurance, not so much for the for the sprint drain, but uh, I'm sorry, in agility. Uh, agility helps your armor class, so the more you have an agility, the more armor class you have. And then I always throw a couple points into encumbrance because my armor is heavy, and if I'm going to go to a dungeon, I'd like to be able to loot some stuff, and if I can't, then it's pretty pointless. So, we have our setup, we have our dungeon, it is time to roll, and so let's begin. So very simply, open up your inventory, use your Potion of Midnight that I thought I created. Um, did I not? Oh, it expired. It expires in two minutes. They change it to where all potions now expire in two minutes. We gotta make another one. So just keep that in mind. All potions expire in two minutes. Not like healing potions, but you know, your reset potion, your Potion of Midnight, stuff like that. You can see, oh, this one's 30 seconds. So that's a way to combat people just carrying a bunch on their bar. And then if they're getting in trouble in PvP, just drink a potion of midnight and being able to transport away. Even though you can actually 
transport and follow them. So, here we go. We are heading into the dungeon. Voila. So, we are here. We are in the dungeon of midnight. We are going to wait because, like everything else, it takes a minute to load. Um, you will see that these doors will all shut and they will become straight up stone doors. This one should be shutting here soon because the goal is you have to follow the path. So there you go. So what we need to do is we need to follow the path. We need to kill the bosses and then get to the final boss and kill him. So like I said, let me just make sure all my admin stuff is off. We'll make sure we're eating and drinking is on. And we'll get rid of sprint and we'll go back to one sprint speed. Okay, so now I'm a normal everyday guy like everybody else. And so let's work through this. So for the most part, the trash mobs are not a problem. Um, as you can see with the build I have, not, not too terrible. Um, anytime you have damage, just unequip your weapon and you will regen from your passive regen. But we're just going to run through all this pretty quickly. You can see that some of these animals will cripple you and they will sunder you and some will even bleed. So there we go. We'll keep on moving here. There's two paths here. I always take the right path. This is just my choice. I feel it's the best path to take. But again, I've never taken the other path to really know if it's worth it. So as you can see, I mean, I'm pretty much soloing through here. Um, without any trouble at level 60 in this gear um, If you're lower level and if you're not in this silent legion gear and have the armor I do this might be a little bit challenging um, But you can do it. You can't just like steamroll through it like I'm going right now So we'll pop on our regen here quick. This guy's an archer So we'll wait for it to fully go through so he doesn't shoot us with an arrow which he just did Oops, and now we'll start having that. Alright, so we need to get rid of this archer guy. So you can see that all the humans in this zone, you can one-shot with a heavy attack with my current setup. Alright, so again, took a little damage. Here we go. So, if we want, we can switch to this. Put up our block, because there's another archer right here. Um... And I don't really want to aggro those over there. So if you want, you could always bring a bow here with some poison arrows as well. Yep, there we go. Come on. And goodbye. And then we'll do the same thing here because I believe some of these guys are archers. This prevents them from crippling me. And All right, and they're dead. Okay, so the next section, we went through the boars. This next section is going to be all wolves, and there's a good amount of them, so it gets kind of annoying. So here we go. Always kill the human first, because they usually have some kind of ridiculousness. And dead. And we can unequip our weapon eat a piece of food, get some health back, and then go after the next guy. So again, I know this guy is going to be an archer, so I'm going to go in with my shield and get to him first. All right. All right, there we go. Switch to my two-hander. Switch back to my shield. Now you notice I don't lock on. That's just me. I, I don't know why. I just hate locking on. I think it messes up the game, in my opinion, on how I move and my movement. I just never liked locking on. All right, so let's eat some more food. Oops, I wasn't paying attention, so now I got sundered. And I stopped regening my health because I'm silly. Okay, they're dead. So these wolves are well placed in this dungeon. There's a lot of them that are kind of hiding and you don't see them in the last minute. Like right here, there's going to be three of them coming. Oh, I'm sorry. Four of them. This is one of the most hairy areas in the game. 
I mean, in the dungeon right now is the four spawn wolves. There's a couple two spawn bears we're going to run into. That's a challenge. And then there's a couple um, two and three spawn saber two tigers that can be a challenge. So those wolves usually sit right here. We're almost to the first boss. All right, charge in. I've been sundered and we'll wait until our sunder wears off and we'll heal up a little bit here so right here I believe there's two little wolves hiding in the on the left and the right that you're not ready for and if you don't see them you'll get owned pretty good there's one oh, I'm sorry there were three wolves hiding here okay all right so now we're almost to the first boss so you know you're at a boss because they have this cool little green circle here. And the first boss is a panther boss. There's nothing too special about him. You can just face tank him and kill him pretty quickly. Uh, not too terrible. The gorilla boss, which comes next, is not that easy. He does ridiculous amounts of damage. This guy, not so bad. So at any time, if you're starting to you know feel like you're getting hurt too much and you need a break then all you have to do is pull out your shield and done okay so every time you kill a boss you're going to want to make sure that you harvest it with whatever harvest tool you get because you want that shade bloom the shade bloom is very important because this is an ingredient that you will put in with your other food into your animal pens and it will help increase the chance of you getting a greater pet so how it works is you put in like a baby a baby wolf and depending on what you feed it when it's in the animal pen will dictate if you just get a regular wolf or if you get a greater wolf you know or a baby tiger if you get a regular tiger or a greater tiger that kind of thing so this shade bloom is very important for that kind of stuff so on a pvp server and a pve server this is a shared dungeon, so there's going to be a want for that stuff, so I feel like there's going to be a lot of action in this area from like a PvP um, standpoint. So, we killed that guy, our little door open. You can go up or you can go left. I usually go left. I don't know why, it's just what I do, and I feel like it works. So, this is the bear area. The bears are a real pain in the butt. Um, they have a charge, they have a big stomp, so they're a real pain. One at a time isn't bad. Um, when you get more than one, it gets a little hairy because of that right there. So if you want, you can actually kind of um, block it with a shield. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to fight, it just takes longer. So I can kind of show you that here in a second. Um, so right here, what we're going to do is we're going to hold up our shield here. And we're going to go kill this archer guy quick. Alright, so this is what I'm saying. So fight the bear with a shield. That way you can time when he's going to do his charge. Like right here. Wait for it. See, he hasn't done it yet. So there you go. So this is a two pool. There's two of these two pools, which are rather challenging. Um, if you weren't Level 60 in the best gear, these things would be a real pain in the butt. Because they're already a pain in the butt without it. None of them have done... There it is. So I blocked it. But they do a charge like you saw earlier, and it's really not that fun. And also they do this stomp where they stand up on their hind legs and they stomp down. That's also not very fun. So fighting them with a shield is just safer when there's two of them. If there's one, it's not a big deal. And I always choose an axe because of the... There's... Oh, see? Just got knocked down because I wasn't paying attention. And I always choose an axe because of the bleed. I like the bleed on the axe. Um, so axe is usually my number one choice when it comes to the one-hander with the shield is the axe. Um... So now we're in the bear cave. This is where you pick up your bear pet, your little baby bear. Um, so just make sure you don't kill them. I would suggest you pick up the bear first. I would 
you know, or make sure when you're swinging your little two-hander that you don't kill the poor little baby. Um, but I'm gonna run right in here. Take out these guys. Alright. Take out the little bears here. He's gonna do a stomp. Uh, whoop. Now he's gonna do his charge, but he's dead. Okay. So, now that he's dead, I didn't see the baby, so I felt safe going in there. And now I can come over here and grab myself my baby bear cub um, so that I can have him. So there you go. Got my bear cub. We killed them. And we're almost to boss number two. So there are three bosses, and then there's the main boss, so total of four. All right, let's get out my two-hander. There's going to be another double bear spawn right out here. Voila. Hello, bear. Luckily, the one didn't attack, so you only have to fight one at a time. If you're in the middle of a swing with a two-hander, which is why I also like it, is you can't be interrupted. So you can see that the charge doesn't work because I'm in the middle of my animation. So that's another reason why the two-hander is really nice. Alright. So nothing else left here. We're just going to follow this path all the way to the gorilla boss. Now, the gorilla boss is very, very hard. Um, you can't just face tank him. You need to fight him, fight him. You need to kind of do it tactically because he hits like a truck and he continues to hit like a truck. So I will show you how to beat him. He's much, much harder than the first guy. He's actually harder than the boss. They really nerfed the main boss where the main boss is probably the easiest now, but this guy is probably the hardest right now. And then the bull that will fight in the last, second to last boss, he's not too bad. He's a little bit harder than everything else, but he's not as hard as this gorilla. Now this gorilla has a couple attacks. He just basically keeps pounding on you. He does a jump attack, and then he does a stand up attack, and he slams down. The best, what you have to wait for him is wait for him to do his kind of like pound on his chest, I'm the king, and that's his opening where you can do some damage to him. So I would suggest doing the whole sword and board with this guy. You can take a couple of these basic hits only for a second, and then you have to block. So now he's gonna keep attacking me. If I get out of his swing range, then he'll do another mechanic, but if he can keep hitting me, then he will just do that. So, so right here, you'll see soon he's gonna... Oh boy. Oh boy. Right there. That is your, hey, go attack him. But my health is really low, so I gotta wait. Now, you could just kind of run around a little bit if you want, but that jump charge is a nightmare. Wait until my health is back up, and then we'll start attacking him a little bit more. Oh boy. This guy hurts. So, you can see my shield's taking some damage, but it's not too bad. Okay, that's your clue, clue to start attacking him, but I missed because I didn't lock on. More heals, more heals. So, if I didn't have just a roasted haunch, this would probably be a little bit easier. So you can hear how fast he is. Alright, get ready for it. Alright. So, he's barely a quarter health right now. And he's chunking me. So we need to let our heal go a little bit. This is where having a bow would be helpful too. But I didn't bring one. Almost there. And... There we go. Okay, now we need to get out of here. 
So this strategy works too. You just get in, wait till your health's up, take some more damage, and then get back out. Just make sure you don't get hit by his nice little uh, diving attack. So we're almost ready to have Adam again. So this is probably a better tactic if you brought a bow, you could shoot him with some arrows. We're almost ready. One more. And then... There we go. Alright, let's get out. Woo Stayed in a little too long on that. And now I'm out of stamina, which is not good either. Okay. You can see that my haunches are getting low. I brought 50. I probably should have brought a little more. I've been using them a little bit more um, than I should have. I regen much faster when I am running without a weapon because of the passive regen on top of the food. But this guy's going to die right here. So. And he's dead. Whew. That was a fun fight. There we go. Get some Shade Bloom. Oh, he got lots of Shade Bloom on him. All right. So now, the next section is where you get to choose. I believe you can do the Gorilla Path or you can do the Sabertooth Path. The reason why we go the Sabertooth Path is we want to pick up a little Saber, Sabertooth Cub so that we can have him as a pet. And so that's usually the path I will take. Um, so going through here, you're back to just using your two-hander. Everything's pretty, pretty easy um, until we get to the next boss. Alright. Done. Now be careful with the Sabertooths. They actually bleed you. Um, so it will prevent you from healing. And it can be quite a challenge. So just keep that in mind. Alright. He's dead. Alright. So you can see no bleed. Just getting another roasted haunch just to be safe. We got three guys here. Come in. Alright, and then this guy. Okay, so you can see I'm still bleeding. So wait for your bleed to go off before you eat any of your food. And heal back up. Alright. And then we only have one more really bad uh, fight here, and that's going to be the, um, I think it's the next one is the really bad one. And right there is that, the little baby cubs. So make sure you don't kill the little baby cubs. You don't want to kill those poor little guys. We want to pick them up. So we... All right, got them. Get our little baby cub. Hello, got him. Again, these things weigh 50 pounds a piece, so that's why I put on the armor reduction. Um, so just keep that in mind that if you come in here and you want a little bit better in your encumbrance so you can get, you need to carry 100 weight just in the pets. So, all right, here we go. Last guy. Okay. No bleed. Okay, so here is probably the hardest pull. This is going to be three saber tooth, and they come at you pretty quick, and they bleed you up pretty good. So right when you get to a certain point, they're just going to start charging you right here, and there are three of them. So this can be nasty if they all get bleeds on you. Okay, done. All right, so right here... You're probably going to aggro a couple gorillas when you come around to the right here. Try and hug the right as best you can, but there's a good chance you're going to aggro them regardless. So, I didn't, luckily, but be careful. If you don't hug the right, you will aggro that guy and two gorillas. So, we are now at the second to last boss. This is the bull. Uh, the bull basically has a charge. He has this weird kick combo. He does a couple little weird things. Um, similar to the gorilla, this guy would be great to have a bow while he's doing his weird kick thing. You can shoot him and then pull out your shield and axe when he's done. 
um, just to, you know, get some stacks on him and do some damage to him. Now, what I don't like about this is when you jump down here, you lose damage. It's kind of lame, but whatever. So you got to heal right when you jump down and then get ready for him to come. So he's going to do that charge, and then you also get stuck. And this is when he does this crazy thing. And he'll continue to do it if you stay in range. Alright. Alright, so now is when we're going to heal. Alright. We'll get our heal going. Watch you don't get charged. Like that. If he knocks you into the poison, you're in some major trouble. Because then you got stacks and that shit noxious gas on you as well. Which just adds to the pain. So this is the thing I don't like is you get stuck on him. They need to fix that. Because now you're stuck and then he's going to start doing his thing. And he's going to do some good damage to you with it because you're stuck underneath him and you can't get out. And dead. And, whoa, where'd he go? There he is. So we'll get our Shade Bloom from this fella. More roasted haunch if I want to make a cooking fire and all that good stuff. I don't think I can make a cooking fire in here, though. All right. So after you kill him... We're going to heal up, and then we're going to go to the last boss. So you can see, you can do this solo, and I'm not really all that well prepared. There's a lot of things I could do better. Bring a bow, bring some poison arrows, that whole thing. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys, this is doable solo, um, like every other dungeon in the game. And more wolves here, so we'll kill the wolves. And then lastly, we have some more of those werebat things from the child of Jabal Sog. Like we learned how to get the potion from. That's last. So there we go. Whoops, missed. Okay. And we're almost out of food, but I think we don't need any more at this point. The last couple are going to be a piece of cake. So they're going to growl, and they're going to come after me. And then we'll get to the last boss. Okay, shebang. Don't know why he's just standing there. These things cripple and bleed. All right. So the last boss is really easy. Um, he's kind of like the panther boss. You just basically keep attacking him. Keep trying to turn your camera because he jumps all over the place. But he's a pretty easy one to beat. So let's wait for the bleed to wear off. Let's eat our last piece of food to go to full health. And let's go have at this fella. Okay. Werewolf. Here we go. So just have at him. He really doesn't do a lot of damage. Which, he just jumps all over the place, which is really super annoying. But with a two-hander, if you're, if you're moving your camera, you'll be fine. You might miss a little bit. But it's still okay. I mean, you can see how much damage he's doing. I mean, look. He's barely hurting me. So I don't know why they nerfed him so much. He used to kill people in, like, seconds. I think they over-nerfed him. He needs to be a, hit a little bit harder. Because you don't have to wait for his growl to do damage to him. You can just kill him through his BS. Now, as soon as you kill him, Jabal Sog is going to pop up. Get a nice little view of him. So, you can hear. So basically what you gotta do here is after you listen to him, you harvest this guy up, and you're gonna get this Flesh of Remembrance. So you can see I have two of them right here. I will eat this, and when you use this, you are going to learn the Jabal Sog religion. So as soon as you eat that, you will see that you now have this right here. Bower of Jabal Sog, and it's going to teach you all this wonderful stuff here. 
Um, you also notice that you get multiple pieces of the flesh. However, it expires in two minutes. So if you want to run it and you have buddies and you have like a preservation box, you could throw this in the preservation box and then maybe your buddies could log on and still have time to eat it. And then you can share the religion with everybody else without them having to do it. The preservation box, I think, will keep this going for quite some time. So that is pretty much the Midnight Grove, um, the boss fights. Just wanted to show you guys you can solo it at level 60 and kind of how you do it. And then once you click here, you are out, you are done. So this is Vanny from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on the Midnight Grove. Hopefully this was helpful. And if you have any comments, leave them below. Like the video if you like it. Sub to the channel if you like my content. So here you go, you get spit out right here. I don't know why you get spit out here in this neutral town, but you do. And that is that. So hope you guys enjoy. Cheers and peace out.